Hi, everybody. Uh, I want to talk to you today about teeth grinding um, because it's something that's been coming up, up a lot for me lately with my clients, and it's just more and more people are having uh, a lot of trouble with teeth grinding and the pain in the jaw and the neck and all of this. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit and tell you guys um, some tips for natural relief for teeth grinding. So who is a teeth grinder? Go ahead and put it in the comments if you are. Um, and uh, who wears that super sexy mouth guard? Anybody? I have, I have definitely worn that in the past and I am a teeth grinder or I used to be really bad um, until I figured out some ways to kind of get to the root cause of what was going on um, and make it better. So I'm night guard free, which is a great thing now. Um, but I understand how hard it can be. Um, so when I was going through nursing school many years ago, that's when I first started getting these really bad teeth grinding issues. Um, it got so bad that I would wake up with raging headaches every morning and I just had this tension all down my neck. Um, and I even chipped one of my back molars. So once I did that, I was like, okay, something's going on here. I need some help. And um, went to the doctor and the only solution that he gave me was to take muscle relaxants um, to help relax my jaw and reduce uh, the effects that grinding and the pressure that grinding was putting on my jaw. And I took the muscle relaxants and they definitely helped me a, a little bit, um, but left me feeling super sleepy and groggy. And I was trying to pass nursing school finals and it was just not working. And if any of you know me, uh, you know that my main goal and my main concern is always to get to the root cause of what's going on rather than using uh, medications or things as band-aids. Definitely sometimes we need these things if we're in a really bad place, but I was just more interested in getting to the root cause of what's going on. And so I want to share two things with you today that really, really helped me reduce my deep grinding and clenching. Um, so the first one is magnesium. Um, and magnesium is, uh, is a mineral in our body that's used for a lot of different uh, biochemical reactions. So it, uh, it, in particular, it is essential for regulating our nervous system, our muscular system, and our cardiovascular system. So you can think of it as kind of a natural muscle relaxant in the body. Um, and so it has beneficial effects uh, for regulating this muscle contraction if we're really, really gr you know, clenching and grinding and, and feeling it in our neck and jaw. Um, and so you get magnesium ideally through food. Um, so it's things like leafy greens, nuts and seeds, whole grains or beans if you're eating those, avocados, bananas, uh, things like that. The only problem is that typically we don't get enough magnesium in our diets because of the foods we're eating. Um, usually if we're more kind of, you know, geared towards eating more processed foods, less leafy greens, all of this. Um, and also sometimes we're not able to absorb the magnesium efficiently if we have any sort of digestive disease or digestive issues. So ideally we're getting magnesium through food. Um, if you are not getting enough magnesium through food, it can be a good idea to uh, supplement magnesium in your diet. And so with supplementation, it's critical to ask your doctor what's going to work for you. So I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you if magnesium supplementation is going to be something that will work for you. I'm actually a nurse, so I know how crucial it is to make sure um, that things work for you, especially if, if you have heart disease or kidney disease. Um, or if you take different medications, sometimes magnesium can interact. Uh, with those. So definitely check, but what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit more about magnesium um, and how it helped me. So um, taking around 200 to 400 milligrams of magnesium as a supplement a day um, can really help and make a difference. I usually take mine just before bed. And when I was in nursing school and I started taking this, uh, I noticed a um, some really good effects within about a week or two. Um, and I did have to be really religious with taking my magnesium every day to see these muscle relaxant effects. And you take it at night because it does make you a little bit sleepy. 
Um, but it can be a really, really nice thing to add into your regime if it works for you. So getting too much uh, magnesium from food is not a risk um, because our body is able to process that, but having too much magnesium from supplements can cause diarrhea, abdominal cramping, nausea, things like that. So if you're noticing those symptoms, um, you'd want to dial back the dose or figure out if it's going to work for you. But it can make a really, really big difference. So it's definitely something to think about. I use a brand called NatureCalm. You can find it at grocery stores, um, but you can get them at you know the pharmacy. Um, and you want to get good quality. Post below in the link um, some considerations to think about when you're buying magnesium. So that's the first thing that helped me with the clenching and grinding, and what has what helps a lot of. Um, a lot of clients I've spoken to as well. The second thing has to do with getting to the root cause of what's going on and what's causing this clenching and grinding uh, in the first place. And so the, the number one thing that, um, that increases this teeth grinding and clenching is stress, definitely. And that makes sense, right? I, I started getting horrible um, grinding and clenching in, in my sleep when I was trying to get through nursing school, which was a really, really busy time, and there's a lot going on, and so that stress really manifested in my body. So take a minute now and just try and think where you measure up on that on a scale of one to ten. Where would you rate yourself in terms of how stressed you are on a daily basis? Just have a think about that. When I was going through nursing school, I was probably a nine out of ten every day. So if you're rating yourself anywhere at a five or above, it's likely that you're walking around with a lot of unmanaged stress. And stress has real tangible effects on our bodies. And a lot of times right now um, in this day and age, it's, it's kind of these chronic stressors that are like, you know, job deadlines, not getting enough sleep, um, having family issues or financial issues, these kind of chronic low-grade stressors that are keeping us in this constant uh, sympathetic state or fight or flight state of being. Um, so, where wherever you you uh, rated yourself on that daily um, uh, average level of stress on a daily basis, just think about how that's affecting your clenching and grinding and things that are uh, you know your physical body. Um, and so stress isn't going to just magically disappear or go away. We're always going to have things that test us and stress us. But that doesn't mean that we have to be walking around in this uh, state of chronic low-level or maybe high-level stress every single day. Uh, so what can we do? There's three, three things I usually tell people to start with these uh, stress management techniques. And I'm not going to tell you to have a spa day or go take a bath or something. Um, there's some real tangible things that we can definitely do. The first step is just tuning in to your body. So asking yourself that question, where am I? Where do I rate myself right now on a scale of one to 10? What's my stress level? Doing that every day and cultivating this connection between uh, your body and how you feel. Sometimes this it can feel like a disconnect. So saying, doing a little scan and check in, saying, am I tensing my jaw right now? How stressed am I? I'm a seven out of 10 right now. Am I crunching up my shoulders? What am I doing? So doing a little bit of a scan to tune in. And so by bringing this mindful attention to our body and especially our jaws um, and our stress levels, we can begin to retrain our muscles and just really understand what people, places, and events are bringing us stress on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's the first step. The second step is a little bit different because you know, we may be used to thinking of all these things that we can add in for stress reduction techniques. Like, what can we add in? Can we add in bubble baths and yoga and all these different things? Um, but what I want to focus on today is what can you take out? So it can see, you know, we have these endless to-do lists um, and uh, just tasks. You know, right when we wake up in the morning, we have a list of all these things to do. So one thing I tell my clients to do is look ahead at your calendar and see, are there any events or obligations or things right now that you look at that are already stressing you out or giving you anxiety, just looking at them? So just scan that and see, have you overcommitted yourself? Have you stretched yourself too thin? And you might think, oh my gosh, no, I have to do all of these things. I have these deadlines, I have these obligations. It's, you know, but just take a minute and just just think, is there, is there a place in my calendar or in my day-to-day -day where I can take something out or where I can simplify? 
And that is a really, really beautiful act of self-care. Um, and it can help us, you know, if we're constantly trying to add these things in, that might not be what we need right now. So just take a little inventory of where you can cut back, where you can say no, and where you can simplify. And so the third uh, step here for this stress management technique that works really well, and it's one, one of these things I've shared before here is, um, is the 478 breathing technique. So there's something called the relaxation response. And we talked about being in this uh, state of low level chronic stress. So the flip side to that is the other side of our nervous system, which is the parasympathetic or the rest and digest state where our body is able to restore and heal. So most of the day we're stuck in this chronic stress response, the sympathetic. What we wanna do is flip the switch. So as many times as we can, we're in this parasympathetic to be able to get out of that state, to relax our muscles um, and to relax our bodies and minds. So I think the best way to do it is this 478 breathing technique. And I'll put a little link, I have a video about how to do this, but it's a deep abdominal breathing technique that drops you right into the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, other things you can do are like a 10 minute meditation using an, I like to use an app um, like Calm uh, or Insight, I think is one I've been using recently. Um, something like that, just deep belly breathing, quiet. Um, also anything that gets you out of your regular routine running through your to-do list. Um, it doesn't have to be meditating or breathing. It can be doing something that you love, like going on a walk or yoga or playing an instrument or whatever, something that gets you out of your head. And just prioritizing that and doing that to flip yourself back in that parasympathetic state of being. Um, and this is crucial to get to that root cause of this teeth grinding. So if you are a teeth grinder, you probably know that stress really influences you, but you don't, you're not sure how to manage it. You're not sure what you can do about it. Just putting in these little techniques here is really going to help you get to the root cause of what's going on. Um, you know, using mouth guards or muscle relaxants or things like that might help for a period of time. But if you're not addressing the root cause of your stress and your anxiety and tension, uh, it's not going to actually get any better. And um, it, grinding your teeth is kind of like having a sprained ankle. Your muscles have just gotten kind of sore and worn out. So it has to gradually heal over time. So we need to come at it from all angles here to be able to give us the best chance. Um, so another thing you can do is at night, um, just take some warm compresses and put it on the side of your jaw to, to uh, just sort of relax and retrain those muscles so you can kind of you know relax it over time um, and help help give it the best chance you can overnight because that's when most of that grinding is going to happen when someone's going to elbow you and say you're making this horrible sound please stop um, so that can be something you can do so again to recap it's considering magnesium if that's going to work for you it can be a really great natural muscle relaxant in the body and definitely helped me um, Implementing these stress management techniques, so tuning in, seeing what things are making you stressed and how your body's reacting, um, finding ways you can say no or simplify or taking things out, and then trying a couple different techniques to activate that relaxation response to get into the parasympathetic nervous system. So I hope this helps you because I know this teeth grinding can be really painful and horrible. I mean, I chipped a freaking molar because of it. It was it was bad news, um, but definitely just by going through these steps, you can uh, make a really big impact um, so you don't have to wear that super hot mouth guard anymore. All right, so let me know if you have any questions about this in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. Thanks.